Okay, that's it. We're good, right? Mm -hmm. All right. What it do, players and trainers? It is your boy, the Blazing Squid, and I want to welcome you guys to the first week of the power rankings for the majors LDL. But I'm not alone today. I also have hosting with me Spartacan275. Um, it's actually Spartan275, but uh, Spartan. greetings everyone. I uh, hope everyone's having a good day. As we've concluded concluded week one of LDL majors for season eight. Yes, we have, and it's been a pretty interesting week one. I I personally enjoyed it. How about yourself? It was very interesting. It was a very interesting uh, week one, I have to say. Yeah. Well, with that said, I think we should just jump right into it. Um, but just from week one. Question of the, of the of the week, guys, is gonna be: What do you guys see winning LDL's major power rankings? Like, I'm pretty sure some of these videos are already up for LDL week one, and I don't know if you guys have your favorite team or you have your picks. But Edson, do you have a pick other than yourself? Um, I want to see how the newcomers like Jack, Shane. Uh, Robert and Ryan see how they uh, how they go up against uh, us veterans of the L of LDL but yeah, other than that uh, tough one. Cool. but other than that I, I think I think it's gonna be a very interesting uh, power ranking uh, throughout this season yeah agreed agreed well yeah let's just jump right into this um, so we're gonna start here on the 16th spot, 16th spot, we actually have the Lake Erie Gyarados. Unfortunately, there was a forfeit. Battle was not done. Most of us know what happened. One of the, he just couldn't make it on Sunday. Could not request the extensions as, is, as it's mentioned in the rules. So we had to give a forfeit and Isaac took the win on that. So we'll just jump right ahead and go on to spot number 15, which I had placed Robert. And I think he's a uh, Zionville Zygarts. Mm -hmm. um, yikes! This was a tough one for Robert. Uh, Robert was one of the the top contenders for Evo and got moved up to, to LDL majors, and he actually had to face the reigning champ, Renan Dumb Brother Two. Oh man! Can, can you tell us what were your thoughts on that battle? Uh, to be honest, it it, it was all because of uh, turn one. He, the the fact that he lead Lucario against Mega Steelix and letting it die first turn really uh, cost him the game. Uh, if he actually had preserved it, he would have been able to uh, had a great answer against Snorlax, which was a big pro one of his big problems. Other than that, it was kind of hard to to go up against it. Uh, yeah. Um, advice I have probably for the the newcomers from Evo is do your homework because we're in majors for a reason brennan is known for doing some of the craziest plays i actually ran the calcs afterwards and i was like um brennan you do know you were gonna get an old code by an aura spear right and he's like yeah i knew but he took the gamble and like it really paid off so guys really do your homework when it comes to these former former league players in this in, in these um in the majors, man, because some of these pull some very, very crazy stuff. Uh, but overall, Robert, I believe you can bounce back. It's only game one. And Brandon is probably one of the tougher opponents. So it's only going to get easier from here on out, hopefully, for you. Yeah. And don't yeah. worry, but you'll be that... able to battle him uh, in a couple of weeks. So don't worry, you'll get your revenge. Yeah. All right, so let's jump out to spot number 14. We have Jordan and the Utah Valley Talon Flames. Oof. Um, tell you the truth, this should have been a 6-0. Uh, I, actually, I actually had to agree. It would have been a 6-0, uh, but I don't know. He was able to stop uh, Megalovany from pretty much sweeping... Uh, his entire team, but the fact that he uh, he sacked Decidueye, one of his answers against Aloha Mola, was a really ha uh, heartbreaking thing to see. And he probably yeah. expected like uh, 
Oh, let's switch into switch into Sidewire. It will be okay. Nope. Uh, don't forget about Scrappy. Um, yeah. It was it. You he... lost it. But yeah, those were very unfortunate hits he had to take with Sidewire. But I, I am uh, proud that he did bring in uh, Girder, and it took ve relatively well against a stab uh, drain punch against Lopini that was plus four. Yeah. So uh, kudos for preventing uh, Megalopony from doing anything, uh, if, uh, doing any more harm. But other than that, uh, uh, eh, that's all I have to say. Yeah, no, I agreed. I, I kind of looked over this a little bit right before the match, and I was like, had um, Shane just had return or probably last resort or had jump kick. It would have been a 6 0 straight up. Drain Punch, Drain Punch is base 75. Anything a little higher points wise would have taken out the girder and probably swept through the whole team. So I feel like Jordan was a little underprepared for the Mega Low Punny. Especially, I like, I don't know. Like, he just stayed in with Shovel and was taking those hits. And I was like, do you even have an answer for this? I was expecting like maybe some type of Scarfer or something like that, but I didn't see anything. And I was just like, Okay, but as mentioned, yeah, the girder was able to deliver the hit. If it wasn't for that, I'm pretty sure it would have been a rough week for Jordan overall. Yeah, most definitely. <laughs> All right, so let's jump on to spot number 13 where we have Brandon and his, uh, it's Mew Valley, right? No, Moon, Moon Valley Moon Mewtwo is returning yeah. for another season as well, along with Jordan and Shay. Oof, Jordan had a tough matchup. He had the lazy Brandon. ghost this week. Brandon. I said Brandon? Did I say Brandon? No, I you said jo uh, Jordan. I said Jordan. Alright, so Brandon, had a, he was up against the lazy ghost. And I don't think Brandon was as prepared as he should have been for this match. Uh, I don't think so either, but he did bring... I noticed that uh, near the end, he did have Scarfed Goudreau, which was... A nice uh, addition to his team, but yeah. other than that, it was it was kind of heartbreaking seeing how what I assume was a banded Blaziken uh, doing almost l less than half uh, against uh, Salamance. So it's like, hmm, that's very interesting. But other than that, uh, and then got the the got the tail stall was. It hurt to see uh, how Pilot Swan Swine was pretty much PP stalled yeah. uh, against it, so it, it really hurt seeing it. That was super unfortunate. That was. <laughs> it actually took up half the match, and that's crazy. 15 turns, I believe. Yeah. It was ridiculous. Uh, but yeah, just uh, coming into this match, um, Brandon. I think his lead overall kind of had him a back foot against Arthur, especially because then the the fortress got in, was able to get rocks off for free before the blazer can come comes in, and then the salamands and stuff like that. Just lead wise, I, Brandon was on a back foot there, and just Arthur and his prep man, just ridiculous this week. It's just uh, it's out of this world, man. Sometimes. Well, Arthur can bring to the table. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know if Brandon had any scarfers. This uh, week. I don't think. So. Oh, okay, the Gudra. I think it was just a Gudra. Yeah, it was only the Gudra. It, it, it yeah. that was a scarfer. That because it outsped uh, Mega Guard of War near the end. Yeah. Yeah. So hopefully, maybe Brandon carries some coverage for the Mega Guard of War. I don't think he had much coverage for it. He probably had Sludge like, Wave, but being a Scarf he mod, he, he, yeah, he, can't, he couldn't lock in with whatever yeah, so, was left. So for future reference, probably bring it in sooner, because I think he lost Tapu Blue Tapu and Blue, someone else. Pile of I know swine. he lost Pile of Swine, which you could have preserved for the late game, knowing that the Salamence was in the back. Well, I guess it's because of the Infernape and stuff like that. Yeah. So. But just bringing it sooner would probably just at least get the differential lower for the most part. All right. 
So that's spot number 13. And now we have another newcomer on the Evil League. And that's going to be Ryan G in the Albany Obama Snows. I personally fought him, but I want to hear what are your thoughts on this one. Uh, the fir the turn one flinch uh, on Rhydon really cost him from having at least the rocks on the field. And it forces him to attack uh, against your es uh, Escavalier. And a after that, it was kind of hard for him to uh, like get back into the game. Uh, I mean, uh, I'm surprised he did bring like Scarp Tapu Coco. Uh, I guess because of worrying about probably Scarf Bikini. Uh, but uh, other than that, it was, I don't know. He, he made some interesting choices that I didn't think that really helped him out. Like the, um, when he stayed in uh, and used Milk Drink uh, against your, what, Choice Specs Victini? Yeah. Yeah, on, on, on his possibly his defensive invested uh, mill tank, and it wouldn't able to survive uh, two hits from it. So ha uh, keeping it in like that really costs him the most likely the game. But at the same time, it's not. Well, actually, if he would have attacked, like maybe with body slam, try to pr pray for like a ha uh, para hacks then maybe he would have been able to bring it back a bit. But other than that, it was it was kind of hard for him to uh, br uh, bring it back after losing uh, right, uh, right on with it, with South Rocks or uh, ERH. Or Mill Tank. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah I, I agree. Um, it just kind of falls back on the same boat with Robert. Just do a little bit more homework. Uh, he was actually very shocked to see that I actually put a lot of speed investment in my Scavalier to outspeed a right on. And that caught him off guard. So, and then plus the flinch, that really, really hurt a lot. Um, Isaac was telling me the Flygon took unnecessary damage with that switch in as well. I have to agree on Just, that. Yeah, like that brought it below, yeah, below 50. So it basically, it, it died from any other hit from my other mods. It was like super unfortunate uh, i know it's not gonna work twice now this cavalier i was speeding right on or maybe even the same lead um but overall the rest of his team was very very formatted solid solid um same top of coco uh being scarfed really limited his switches or his attack actually because i had zero aura with boards absorb and then i had bitini who resisted the fairy stat so it made it very, very difficult for him to, to kind of use Tapu Coco there at the end. Um, but Ryan is making transactions, and I he has a, it's still a very scary team, a very powerful team. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to count him out just yet. It shows us week one. But let's jump into your match here. Your opponent, the Birmingham Schultz, and your coach, DJ. Oh. Oof. Yeah, uh, wow. that's amazing. This I love this game. This game was probably one of my favorites of the week. <laughs> um, gotta say, from turn one, I felt a sense of deja vu back in season six when I did almost <laughs> the same thing against you with Sack Attack yep. with Z Magic Coat. Z Magic Coat. Now I was like, okay, that, this is interesting. It, it stopped uh, Comfy from doing what it had to do, so I had to like think of a way to prevent from Kofagrigus from probably sweeping uh, but I guess he didn't uh, expect uh, Skarmory's Whirlwind uh, so I prevented that the one thing that really uh, cost him the game was losing his Incineroar because his Incineroar literally I almost had almost no answers I almost had no answers other than Slow King and even then Slow King wasn't going to uh, take the hits very well and when i found out that it was a it was scarf it it, it, it was uh it really cost it um, yeah other than that he tried to keep uh momentum up as best as he could uh especially with tapu Fini with uh with having like 
Taunt and Necrozma with Stealth Rocks plus coverage move with uh, Signal Beam. But um, other than that, eh, there was also the fact that he brought in Seismitoad with with a Rindo Berry, which was nice, but it did not survive Mega Charge of Wise Solar Beam. So it, it that was like another thing that kind of bugged me that it. it that I wanted to see what the Seismic Tool was there for, to be honest. And uh, props to using Bra uh, Braviary as a special defensive ball with setup, but at the same yeah. time, Taunt is gonna stop it from doing what it, it can, and that also costed him losing uh, Braviary. Uh, yeah, uh, DJ coming into this match, uh, yeah, as you mentioned, turn one amazing phenomenal i loved it um it was like I, I think you read the taunt or you read the toxic but it was just awesome and then the calm minds but as, as as you mentioned the skarmory came in uh that's the moment you attack skarmories are known for having whirlwind or mons come in and they use roar especially in the setup so using that second calm mind really really got you set back and then and then you actually Towards the beginning, you were losing all the mind games, like all the 50 50 rolls. Um, he lost it. He didn't pick up until towards the end, but towards the end, it was just a little too late. But yeah, going to the Slow King to play. Slow King pay was probably the most heartbreaking one. Um, and actually, you could this could have been avoided because Anthony mentions in his draft analysis that he's seen. Um, a Z Captain Slow King, and it's actually a really, really good mod. So if you would have kept your eyes open on that, this could have been avoided. You did have? I think he has something that could have taken it. I think there was uh, something. It I was uh, uh, Seismitoad. Seismitoad, exactly. Seismitoad. Because they probably had all uh, water absorb. Uh, absorb. So. Yeah. So that's it's just doing that little bit of research. So if you would have watched Antonio's draft analysis, you would have been one step ahead, my dude. That's all I gotta say. Mm. But <laughs> with that said, we're gonna jump on to spot number ten here with the Winnipeg Jellison and their coach Matt Mega Matt. This is actually a very close game for the most part. Uh, Matt and and Gem ninety nine really going at it. Um, both of them had pretty good sets this week. Mm -hmm. Whoa. My, dear, my computer just shut off. Okay. Oh. Um, that was weird. Okay, so yeah, both of them really, really good sets. Um, Matt was just a little bit unlucky this week. Getting the, the burn on the Gyarados was huge, man. Yeah. Really, really cost them. Um, especially since a, a crit comes into factor later on and stuff like that. Like, it could have really helped out. Um, but yeah, I, Jesse making the right calls and stuff. Um, Matt, Hacks was just not on his side this week. Hacks was just really not a, not with him this week at all. And the fact that the that he lost is uh his one of his best answers against Mega Charizard Charizard X, which is Clefa uh, unaware of Clefable, it kind of uh, hurt him in uh, in the long run. Yeah, but you know it was a blessing and a curse because since it was unaware, Clefable could have got toxic by the Golbat, but since that para did come off from the bounce, mm -hmm. he would have been so much better off. But really, um, another another thing I actually have to mention, Matt was, um. Jesse brought a, a the, the moment you see flame charge on Zep Striker, that kind of tells you it's most likely going to go more physical than special. So the fact that you actually went for a grass move and gave him Sap Sipper really threw me off because I'm like, I thought you knew it was a physical set, yet you just gave him the boost. And even though I know you had the Cliff Apple in the back, that's just damage you kind of like wasted oh i mean a turn you wasted and you actually gave him a boost which leads to pair and stuff like that but um another thing i want to say is that um, 
surprised that you went turn one with setting up with uh, crocodile with bulk up and so like trying to uh, play mind games uh, with with Jetman. Uh, but other than that, that kind of costed uh, uh, when Swamper came in as he almost had no switch ins uh, against Scald. It, it was Scald was completely free as it, uh, it can literally uh, wither down any of his mons no matter what. Alright. And now let's jump on to spot number nine with the Ratty Blue Wizards and their Rocketville Rocket Yeah, Rocketville Rockets. Uh, a very close match for Steven. I just want to point out, Steven, you do not poison jab a steel type. Twice. Twice in a row. Twice. I was like, I, at that moment I said, this is Steven playing against himself. Like he's I legit actually, playing. Oh, when I when I think about it. When he did it the first time, I was like, okay, he probably predicted uh, Whimsicott coming in. But then after the second time, I was like, eh, I don't know, man. If he's gonna be, if he's trying to sack his uh, Registeel, I don't know. Yeah, and then really, what just cost him the the whole point turning point? Because this match actually goes probably like thirty minutes, and both teams only lost one mod. But the biggest turning point of the match was the Mega Sis were going down. That just changed the whole momentum of the match. Mystic Fire. Um, yeah, Mystic Fire. I know Steven said he did not see that coming, but it's very well known, actually. It, it kind of is. I mean, what do you, uh, to be honest, uh, I don't know. I would say bring in Pelipper to, uh, so he can weaken the fire type move. Uh, and able to keep Mega Scissor from dying from it. But other than that, uh, I think he did relatively well other than those two mess missteps. Um, uh, yeah, I, I would say uh, other than that, it, yeah, he did his best against him. And the fact that he got uh, uh, paralysis on Cresselia really prevented Cresselia from doing almost anything for almost four, four turns yeah that actually helped him out a lot to get him back on his feet a bit but in the long run it just wasn't enough to pull through with the win um yeah but like Pelipper is usually known especially to whenever it has a chance to set up rain again you do that especially if it helps out uh, mega scissor especially i don't think he had any fire types so no, I he had to somehow uh, sneak a hidden power fire or a mystical fire on his team somehow. Yeah, and but another this thing. This is the best way. Yeah, but uh, another the thing uh, was the question of bring rain in general against Manaphy, as Manaphy could have, uh, and he actually did was uh, hydration with rest. Yeah. And in the rain, it's. It's just a, uh, just a free heal. That's all it is. And yeah. I was kind of, uh, I was questioning it, but at the same time, I can, I can understand, especially with Ludicolo on his team. Yeah, especially with the Ludicolo and uh, the Jolteon as well. Yeah, with... I think he wanted to take advantage of Rain for them too. But I, I guess the fact that he brought dual screams and actually made Manic Feet hit, um, to eat up so many hits really cut him off guard uh, I think he mentioned in his video he just was not expecting it whatsoever and that really kind of threw him off so that's great prep on Jack and we'll get, we'll, we'll get there for Jack when we do yeah all right so that's our bottom eight right now I would say yeah from yeah. 9 to 16 and I don't think these are gonna be set in stone whatsoever it can easily change in one week. Yeah. I, I can see some of these guys bouncing onto the top eight for next week. I I know I know some of these guys and some of these guys I know will will make the adjustments they need to their play style. Yeah. But let's jump on to spot number eight. Spot number eight, we have another newcomer from the Evil League. Actually league champion, my little brother Isaac. 
and his Miami Manetrix. Unfortunately, Isaac did take the win from Shea uh, since he couldn't make it, but we know that this week he's up against the Blazing Squid, and I want to see what this former EVO champ has to offer. Loki, I'm actually that, looking forward for that match. Yeah, it should be happening tomorrow, hopefully. Or today, today being Wednesday. Yeah, today being Wednesday, this going up. Yeah. But with that said, let's jump into Jack. His team is. See if I can read this. The, uh, the Swansea uh, Swanas. Oh, okay. Yeah, Swansea Swanas. Um, Jack, I've, I've heard he's good. Didn't know it until. I actually watched his battle. I was like, okay, this kid is actually legit. Oh, trust me, he's pretty good. I, I, I face him in Evo. He, even though he 6 0'd me the first week, I did bring him back at, at, when we battled again in uh, in Evo quarterfinals. But other than that, he, he's a really good uh, player. He's well prepped. He knows what he's doing. He's been. He, this is, uh, if I'm not mistaken, this is his first time playing through. Um, a cartridge league, so Ooh, it is, nice. is, is putting all of this knowledge that he knows from throughout the showdowns that he's done and putting it into this league. So, and, and he's it's, actually, it, and it shows he's a rising star already. Week one, look at him, but yeah, like I, I let's go back straight into that man. If he that man, if he was, I, I love the set, I'll tell you the truth. Um. I think it was a really smart call to use his opponent's reign to his advantage. Yeah. Um, exactly. But the rest, that was phenomenal. He had rain dance himself, I think. He didn't use it as much. I think it was yeah, it was rain dance, um, surf, ice beam, and tail glow. But no, I, I um, thought it was uh, wasn't it rest? Uh, because he had rest, so it wouldn't. Rest, thought... surf, ice beam, tail glow. Oh yeah, you're right. So yeah, he just used his opponent's rain. Even better. Yeah. Look at that. So yeah, he didn't even have to bring rain dance. Um, he he knew. I think um, watching his team builder and actually just watching the battle, he was able to guess Steven's team right, which actually made the match a lot easier for him. He came in with a mindset, one game plan. Um, you know, Chris Celia helping out, setting those screens with the light clay, mm -hmm. and. Um, Catching off that Mega Scizor, just waiting for Steven to make that one misplay that would cost him. I don't know. I like a lot of things that went right with Jack. A lot of things went right. What do you have to say? Um, I would say that other than it, uh, the power hacks they had, uh, oh. as I mentioned earlier, he, he played relatively well. Uh, he had well uh, prep. Uh, ca uh, catching Steven off guard with the Mystical Fire kind of gave him an advantage with Miss Magius. And also uh, having Rocky Helmet Registeel instead of like your usual leftovers was pretty nice, especially against um, a, a terrifying offensive mon, mon such as uh, uh, Conkleber. Um, other than that, that, that I say he played relatively well with great momentum, especially. Oh yeah, I think. Yeah, he used. I, I love the way he used the whimsicott every time he brought it in. He had that U-turn off, and like Steven would switch out, and I was like, wow. <laughs> if Steven would have probably took a gamble there instead of with the Reggie Steel and the Poison Jab, would been in, probably be in a better spot. But like, yeah, the momentum like, was there for Jack. Um, I always saw it always it always looked like Jack was a step ahead for the most part and gotta give Jack the congratulations congratulations on that win. He did really, really well. And I hope you keep it up, man. I really do. That said, we're gonna jump onto the sixth spot and the Goodyear Gudras and their coach Shay, another evil contender moving up. And this week he actually faced it, it was Jordan. Um, very solid prep, very very solid. Um, the mega low punny for off the first turn though. That's just. I was surprised. I don't know if he he put in all. I don't know if he was risking the biscuit or. 
he just realized nah, how well it did or... i think it was because how well it did yeah i guess it is this whole matchup and the fact that it went up to plus four and just taking down uh decidui really gave him the the, the good momentum that he needed uh, yeah too bad he wasn't able to uh to completely sweep but it was a good momentum to uh otherwise and c c i have to say good uh way of using clay doll with z ice beam super sub zero slammer to take out the tokikis because oh, yeah. i wasn't expecting uh yashi bear on uh tokikis when he used uh ice shard with uh mammal swine but yeah having having that tech on you uh with z ice beam was really good yeah uh, I really like this. Uh, I love Z Captain overall. Um, but yeah, that was that was amazing. I, I really enjoyed this match. Um, he made the reads when he needed to, for the most part. Like um, he caught the the Fire MC from the Heatran, mm -hmm. went into Hydreigon. Hydreigon ate that up. It was just it was really looking really really nice for for Shane here. Um, just as mentioned, that Mega Low Punny could have succeeded if you probably had Return, I think. Return or High Jump Kick? Yeah, a Return or High Jump Kick would have legit just... Because I understand he had an Ice Punch for the Togekiss, but even then, a plus four Return would have done a tremendous amount. Or even Last Resort, because by then you would probably have shown all your, all your moves, that more is, or less. That's true. Yeah, because I've seen a lot of um, just straight up power up punch and and last resort are usually like fake out last resort. Uh, fake, yeah, fake out power up punch last resort or yeah, fake out last resort. But like a fake out power up punch last resort would have been phenomenal, phenomenal. But yeah, no Shane, you did amazing this week, man, my dude. Uh, congrats. I'm gonna keep an eye on you. Hopefully we battle soon. I have to check that schedule. But this was a tough one for me to decide between fourth and the fifth spot. I was just telling Jetman 99, but I am going to give Jetman 99 the fifth spot and then we'll go on to Antonio fourth. But uh, Jesse's match, Jesse, Jesse, Jesse. I remember he, he was showing me the teams before and I was like, uh, Jetman, that Clefable is your biggest problem. Uh, going into the match, we knew Clefable. I was like, you don't have much for it. And then even if, if, even if you do, you have to find out if it's unaware or if it's magical. And then once you find out which one of those it is, then you can start working around it. Um, but making the big boy plays early on when he needed to, um, getting those necessary hacks in his favor. <laughs> um, no, but I really love the way Jesse played this. This week, man, overall, um, I know he wants the championship. He's calling himself the champion already. Yeah. And he's he's proving it. He's proving it. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie there. Yeah, I agree. Um, another thing I was, I, he did have an answer against the Clefable, but the fact that he, he lost it against uh, Proton Peep, uh, really really uh messed up his main game plan. But, he's, but I just watched his uh, video, he tried to keep cool, tried to keep the momentum up, and the way how, how he was able to uh, to keep it up uh, was really, really well, especially with uh, Tornadus and Golbat uh, as like a, a as two momentum mons uh, uh, over, uh, to use in, in this matchup. Agreed. It's great to see um, Tornadoes back on Jetman 99's team, as that thing does not miss hurricanes, as we, we witnessed week one. Just, just not. But that's such a great mod, and uh, Jetman 99 really knows how to use, utilize it very well. So keep up the work, good work, Jetman 99. And we're gonna jump into Antony here in spot number four. Yeah, just barely making the top three there. Yeah. But um, my comments were. I felt like you were really in DJ's head this, this week. <laughs> like, <laughs> you were making, I was like, when DJ would go for the magical is when you would braver it. 
and then when he would go for the shadow ball is when you were going for the whirlwind i was like yo somebody <laughs> has to stop this dude right now i was like what is going on like <laughs> but like yeah just having the whirlwind you, you, you knew that there might be some type of setup and you had to stop that and that's what you did i, I feel like as soon as you got outplayed turn one you said okay that's it you put on a thinking cap and you took off mm-hmm that's legit what happened. That's where I witnessed. I don't know if you have any comments to say. Um, the fact that he... Uh, he uh, that he... Uh, sacked his Incineroar really helped me out throughout the game. When I nuked it with... Uh, because here's the thing. I was worried that it was going to be like a defensive... Like a, a bulky assault vest one. And it probably didn't, doesn't kill. Or uh, a max attack. It probably uh two because I knew it was gonna two hit KO uh, with knockoff on Slow yeah. King, but as I mentioned, the team builder, I, I, so I wanted it, uh, is to ensure that it survives uh, a knockoff and allows me to nuke it with uh, Hydro Vortex, and the how I kept the momentum up with Skarmory and Comfy, I I just had to keep I had to keep it up because. Um, because if I had if I had let uh, both in the crossbow or Kafagrigus ever set up, it, it would pro- I would have to say it was GG. In fact, I didn't know what the uh, the item uh, the crossbow was holding, so I don't know. I I actually didn't didn't know because I was kind of worried that it was weakness policy, so I never used U-turn when I had Comfy out, and I yeah. actually hard switching. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to uh, lead off with uh needle queen as i initially wanted it let alone actually use it in the match but it kind of worked me uh worked out in the end especially uh against uh with comfy uh withering out a lot of his mons uh with just leash leash seed and uh draining kiss with taunt friend from setups and then having mega charger just sweeping near the end yeah yeah, for sure. Was that Mega Charizard timid or modest? Timid. That was timid. I yeah, has to finish your team builder. But yeah, no, that was um. Yeah, because I was like maybe, as you mentioned, the the Seismitoad, the Rindo Berry, and it still wasn't able to live. Kind of really caught me off guard too. Probably gotta yeah. figure out that set. But dude, I I really love the lead. I didn't even know Confit got lead seed. So that was really, really nice. Especially since you got it off before the Braviary went for Substitute. I was like, I, I, I was actually, guy... Loki, I actually thought it was a, like a choice band or a choice scarf, uh, Braviary, until uh, I did like nothing with uh, Draining Kiss. And I'm like, okay, I'm just going to use Leech Seed and see if I, how things go. So. Well, it, it worked out. It, it really did. did work out in your favor. Um, but yeah, no, congratulations, my dude. You played amazing that game. I, I really enjoyed that one. That's another one. Waiting for that that, that post comp. You're doing post comp, right? Yes, yes, I am. All right, it so should be I'm re- releasing out tomorrow. So yeah, really excited to to listen to that. Well, we're gonna jump on to the top three, in my opinion. All former champions, all all showing what they're made of at Blazing Squid Week One. I usually like to hear what people, other people say before I talk. Well, what do you have to say, Antonio? Uh, as I mentioned before, that turn one actually made a difference uh, with the uh, Iron and Flitch, and the way that it actually took uh, as Cavalier took uh, like Fire Punch well, really caught uh, uh, caught off uh, Ryan off guard. And especially with the uh, and great prep with uh, how. Well, you uh, gave Savali Ground a lot of coverage. Ice Beam, I think it was uh, Flamethrower, Multi Attack, and what, Pirate Shot? Yeah. Yeah, that was pretty good uh, coverage. Um, I'm, I'm actually surprised that you actually used Spex Patini instead of like Bandit or Scarf Patini. I, I, I guess you, uh, because it, it really helped you out near the late game against. Uh, the mill tank, the Tapu Coco, uh, the superior—you just 
clicked Psychic and Blue Flare, and it just took kills. It did. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, kind of, I wish I would have done a team build there, but I, I kind of looked at Ryan's team, and I noticed how, especially weak, I could have taken advantage of, especially Vitini is known for just spamming v create. so I said, Mil tank, Thick Fat, most likely he will either run it physically or especially if he runs especially i have a chance to two hit ko but it's not a good chance but it was a risk i was willing to take um and it paid off as you see like one psychic did 75 percent. that was ridiculous mm. but yeah it was just i, I think almost calling everything i almost always called the calisified called the top of coco um it was just great coverage against the superior. Man, I've I've been meaning to draft Vitini for a while now. Uh, looking at your logo there too, the <laughs> Vitini. And <laughs> it, it really put in a lot of work and I'm, I'm really excited to have this spawn on my team. But yeah, mentioning um, just turn one, I think, especially the speed creep. I love speed creeping. Speed creeping is probably one of my favorite things to do in draft league format and he, he messaged me just afterwards and he's like, oh, your scavenger has um, some speed on it. And I was like, yeah, I put in enough speed only to outspeed right on. And when it pays off, it pays off. You can tell. And it paid off with the flinch. So imagine that. But yeah, I, I'm really looking forward to this, 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 this season. But enough about me. Let's jump into the Lazy Ghost and the Burning Ham Aerons. Oof, man. This guy. If it wasn't for the crit, <laughs> was for the crit he would have been able to out, uh, outstall the pile of swine and we would have been sitting there for about probably 30 more turns until pile of swine just pretty much dies yeah but i think uh by the time it was towards the end like uh about the tell was ready to start just clicking, clicking side shot or psychic uh he probably had side shot over psychic maybe i think who so. knows um because yeah they usually run side shot shot but yeah no that was it was i really enjoyed this match because um arthur one way or another was gonna get that goblet tail to take advantage of the arena trap Since, shadow tag i don't know uh, shadow tag yeah arena trap is uh duck tier. uh but yeah i don't know why it's legal but whatever but the i don't know why it's tier two <laughs> and it's tier two so like the fact it's Salamance had intimidate and then he tried he hard swapped out into the Gothic Tail with the key berry to have a negative one attack mod plus a plus one in defense. I was like I I, I was just wow this guy this is why Arthur God tech is one of our top tier players in this league especially man. Um but yeah, I, I really enjoyed the way Arthur played it out. Um, hacks will always be a factor in this game, and that's really what made it closer, slightly closer in the end. But what are your thoughts? Uh, uh, the way he, how he used uh, his Salamence was relatively well, especially against uh, uh, the Brandon's Blaziken. Uh, yeah. And how he had tech for Cobalberry. Uh, for Infernape, which kind of uh, caught me off guard a bit. I was like, oh, Cobra uh, Berry. Interesting. And he was able to uh, use Infernape, especially like game, uh, to take out uh, Gudra. And the way he used Scott the Tell is the reason why I really don't want to do stall against him. Or, no, or it, I just don't want to use stall overall. That's why my team maybe look bulky, but I don't want to try to go stall and waste people's time with 30 turns of uh, out stalling them on. So, that's just my uh, opinion. <sighs> yeah, I agree. I'm not a huge fan of stall, but if stall is what gets you wins, by all means. Go for it. I will try to stop it with some wall breakers. But uh, 
I was just going to jump off to end this night or day, whatever time you're watching this, with Thumb Brother 2 and the Salt Lake City Swampers, the reigning champ, returning for another season, showing off why he is number one. He just this guy put all his all marbles. He just put all his marbles, turn one. <laughs> it's it's so funny to watch Snorlax come back on his, to his team, and the first thing it does is pick up five kills. That's all it did. That's Set up and win. Yeah. After Lu after uh, Lucario died, he's like, I'm gonna either set up with Halucha or I'm gonna set up with uh, with Snorlax. And he set up with Snorlax, I, and successfully took down five of his mons: Chansey, Mega Beedrill. It just a lot. It, it, I'm just surprised how well. It just destroyed uh, uh, Robert's team. Agreed. And Robert was one of the evil's upcoming rising stars, and I, I, I've seen he's pretty good. I, I think I watched him and Isaac go at it in in the playoff race, and uh, Robert's got really good stuff. So I was shocked. I really was shocked in the outcome of this match, but. Okay, Dumb Brother 2 doing what Dumb Brother 2 does best. And that's getting wins when it matters the most. Mm -hmm. Because in PGO, he can't do that. <laughs> I don't know why, but he's just... <laughs> it's just an LDO. PGO, it's something else. But guys, players and trainers, I appreciate you guys so much for sticking with us through this Power Rankings for Week 1. Uh, I'm going to try to get these up weekly on Wednesdays, if not Thursdays at the latest. But do you have the slide for the Battle of the Week? Yes, I do. And the Battle Sweet. of the Week is... Battle of the Week is going to be going to this week. We it's have Jack. our contestant, Jack. Congratulations, Jack. Uh, if you're a Patreon, I highly suggest you go talk to Ratty Blue Wizard. Go get your prize. Remember, guys, there is a prize or a shout out for all the Battle of the Week uh, finalists. So, with that said, you guys are amazing. Stay blazing. That's my outro. I'm out of here. Spartan 275, right? Spartan 275. Spartan. And I hope you guys have a great day. <laughs> That's okay. But uh, <laughs> until next time, we'll catch you guys later. All right, enjoy guys, peace.